you have some kind of urological condition or an abnormal finding where your doctor has referred you to the urologist, what can you expect? My name is Dr. Christy Pramuji, and I'm board certified in urology and urogynecology. And I wanna tell you what you can expect when you go to the urology office. Um, we're gonna take a complete history. We need to know your medical conditions and your surgeries. We need to know what medications you're on and your allergies. So come prepared with that. We wanna know what's going on with your complete system because oftentimes the um, issue, the urological issue at hand is related to something else going on in your body. So we need to see all of that. So be prepared to give us all that information. We ask patients to fill that out on the website ahead of time so that you don't have to come early to fill out the paperwork and then we have to enter it into the system. We understand that happens sometimes, but it really it makes it much longer process for you that day. And sometimes it causes us to run behind on our schedule. We really try to be on time, believe it or not. <laughs> sometimes we don't achieve it, but we really try. Um, so you fill out, give us all that history, um, come into the office, we're gonna almost always want to have a urine specimen. I always wanna know what is going on with the patient's urine. Um, oftentimes we'll see blood in the urine, infection. Infection doesn't always have symptoms and it can cause, um, or symptom, I should say symptoms of pain or burning, the typical symptoms of a UTI. Patients come in for just overactive or leaky bladder and we, it turns out it's just infection and we treat it and they're better. So come prepared with a full bladder. Don't go to the bathroom in the lobby. Save it for me. Come in. And my front desk is um, authorized and well aware to catch urine as soon as you come in. Um, so they'll give you a cup, a specimen cup, to, and show you where the bathroom is so you can give your specimen right away while you're waiting. Um, when you do a urine specimen at the urologist's office, you should be offered wipes. So we have wipes in the bathroom um, and we recommend two wipes. So the correct way to get a clean catch urine specimen is to actually use your fingers to open up the labia, the outer lips, use the first wipe to clean, throw it away, not in the toilet, in the trash, um, second wipe, and then put the cup under the, and then start urinating. Put the cup under the stream midway through. Fill the cup as full as you can, about three quarters full, um, and then finish urinating into the toilet. Um, we have a little cabinet in the bathroom, so you can put the cup in the cabinet. And it's a little tricky to lock, but we can show you how to do that. Um, then um, when you come into the exam room, the medical assistant is gonna verify your medical history, your medications, your allergies. They need to know your pharmacy, so come prepared with that as well. Um, then they're going to ask you, what are you here for? And they really help me out a lot by taking a lot of notes ahead of time. So especially if I'm running a little behind, then I already have an idea of what you're here for. Um, they enter that into the medical record and then I or sometimes my physician assistant will come in, verify all of that, review it, and discuss your top concerns. Um, we may not be able to address every single concern at the first appointment, so we need to hone in on your top most pressing one or two concerns that you're here for. Our patients often come in with numerous issues. They've got leaky bladder, they've got sexual issues, they've got bowel movement issues, they've got uh, blood in their urine, a kidney stone. We've seen patients that have just so many things going on and we can't in one visit, we can't address all of that. We try, 
but we just can't. Um, so we're gonna hone in on the top two or three issues, and then we're going to um, really focus on that, okay? Next, we're gonna do a pelvic exam. Um, patients um, need a pelvic exam when they go to the urologist, unless it's for a kidney stone and they don't have any history of UTI or urinary issue, then they may not need a pelvic exam. But basically every other urological patient should get a pelvic exam. And I'm amazed at the number of patients who come in from another urologist and say that they never had a pelvic exam. In fact, I diagnosed cancer one time, a lady with overactive bladder, then going to a doctor, never had a pelvic exam. And when I examined her, I found a vaginal cancer. So you will have a pelvic examination. It's not as uncomfortable as when you go to the gynecologist. We don't have to dig around as uh, with as much pressure as at the gynecologist, and we don't have to do a pap smear, which are the uncomfortable parts of the gynecologist. But we are going to assess, uh, definitely palpate or feel around, make sure there's no abnormality. We're going to assess to see if anything is dropping out of place, because that's a big factor causing symptoms and problems. We're gonna assess the strength of your pelvic floor and ask you to squeeze the vaginal muscles, which are sort of the muscles that you might use to holding gas. Um, so we can assess the strength of the pelvic floor, um, feel for muscle spasm around the vagina. Um, we're also going to check the pH of the vagina and um, also do an abdominal exam to see if we feel any masses in the abdomen. We're also going to look at the condition of the outer part of the vagina or the vulva and the inner part of the vagina. And um, if there's a pain issue going on, we're going to map out the pain sensation with a cotton swab. Um, very rarely we might do a rectal exam that's not very common, maybe once a month that someone needs that. Um, we're also going to do, uh, almost always do a bladder ultrasound. So that is um, a small little ultrasound that all it tells us is how well your bladder empties. It doesn't really show us the structure of the bladder or any tumors or anything like that. It just tells us the volume. So it's very important to know if the bladder is emptying adequately. <clears throat> I like the bladder ultrasound because the only other way to measure the urine volume is with a catheter. So we want to avoid a catheter if we can. It's not super painful, but it's not super comfortable either. I mean, nobody wants a catheter to go in their bladder. if They don't have to. Um, speaking of catheters, occasionally we will need to do a catheter if for some reason the ultrasound reading doesn't quite make sense or we're getting different readings or in the case of infection. So um, if there is some unique issue going on with infection or a confusing issue with infection and we need to make sure that we are getting the optimal specimen, then we will put in a catheter, which is we put some jelly on it, um, clean the area around it to, so we don't introduce infection, and then put in a small catheter. It's about a quarter of the size of the channel um, and collect the urine directly from the bladder into a cup. Um, if there's any concern for infection, we will send that urine to the lab and we do um, what's called PCR urine testing, which um, is where we look for the DNA of bacteria in the urine. So it's gonna give us a lot more information than just sending it to the lab for a culture. We have here in the office our own lab where we can look, look at the urine, do a screening to look under the microscope for blood and infection uh, right away so that we can tell you if you've 
got blood in your urine, if you still have blood, if you were referred for that, or if it's a new finding, um, or if there's um, infection. And um, sometimes we can even tell kind of what kind of infection it is. If it's a yeast or a E. coli, we can get a sense of that from looking under the microscope. Um, finally, we're gonna go over what we found and give you recommendations uh, for treatment, uh, if you need further testing, or if you might need uh, surgery. Um, and then we do a lot of education. We're really um, big on education for our patients. We send out, send out a lot of handouts with our patients um, to help give them information at home, which I hope that they read. Um, and then we'll schedule your follow-up and uh, what the plan is. And we do all that in <laughs> 15, 20 minutes. That's all the time insurance gives us for that typically. Um, if you do need more time, if you have very complex issues, we give patients that time. We don't look at the clock um, other than just to try to stay on time. But we do a very comprehensive uh, evaluation. We really look at everything that's going on with you and um, really try to hone in on what's what's actually going on with you and not just try to um, you know prescribe something and move on you know because we think of each patient as an individual we put ourselves in your shoes and um, want to just provide the best care that we can so i hope that helps you understand what to expect when you come to the urology office and I um, hope to meet you soon.